Welcome into the DFS Den. It's Dave Eddy here, aka Corporal Eddy on Twitter. And let's talk about quarterbacks. For me, quarterbacks are often the straw that stirs the drink when it comes to building a DFS lineup. I play almost everything fully correlated with game stacks. So quarterback is a huge part of that. When I'm looking at stats for a quarterback, I'm looking at a five-game sample size. So in all reality, until we get into week six, the stats aren't something that I can feel fully confident in. But obviously, as we get you know farther into the season, you know, the more I, I trust them. And even once I get you know more than five games into the season, I'm simply going back to the last five games worth of stats. Now, as far as um, you know, what I'm looking at for a quarterback specifically. I think that their points are most predictive by their implied team totals. And that really is quite simple. It's just the more points that that team is expected to score, the more points that we can expect their quarterback to score. Now, that seems kind of self-explanatory, but if it's not something that you're taking into consideration, you definitely should. Now, when I'm looking at just you know the individual quarterback himself, I am looking at metrics over volume. There are some... Um, positions, running back specifically, where volume over matchup is what I'll tell you. For quarterbacks, it's metrics over volume. And the two main ones that I'm looking at are TD rate and yards per attempt. To me, those are the two best predictors of you know how a quarterback is is doing or, or what I can expect from a quarterback. Now, as far as you know, how much do we pay for a quarterback in our lineup? That really can vary. Um, You know, I I don't think people oftentimes are comfortable punting at quarterback, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with that so long as you've got, you know, a game stack built around them. I've won plenty of money, um, you know, quote unquote, punting quarterback. And when I say punt quarterback, I'm not meaning, you know, playing just absolute trash, but I mean, I'm paying down, you know, near the bottom of the viable quarterbacks for the week. It's not every week. Um, and oftentimes I, I will find myself, you know, paying up at quarterback, but definitely paying down is within reason. Typically, anything between about forty-eight hundred and about eighty-five hundred is within the range of playable quarterbacks. <clears throat> now, as far as ownership is concerned, the average ownership um, in winning lineups has been right around eight nine percent. So, you know, that's not a super chalky quarterback. Um, you know, the quarterback exposure does get spread out quite a bit because you know, there are so many options and you can obviously only play one, but that's just something to keep in mind. Not say you need to play a quarterback in the eight or 9% range. It's just saying throughout the course of the season, that's where the ownership average ends up falling. Um, As far as when I'm looking at quarterbacks, kind of the first place that I'm looking is a second or third tier quarterback um, that's facing the most popular quarterback of the week. And we talk about that in the leverage section um, of the strategy guide where, I talk about ways to get different and ways to gain leverage is to say, okay, who's the chalky quarterback of the week? Now, who is he facing? Well, how does that quarterback look? You oftentimes can find really good value in really low owned guys there. So those are guys typically in the second or third tier um, for that week. And again, I probably goes without saying for the most part, but you should be stacking your quarterbacks in MME and cash play the best place, do whatever you want to. If stacking and correlation makes sense, that's part of your player pool, awesome. If not, no big deal. In MME, you almost always need to be at least, you know, team stacking with a pass catcher, but you should be game stacking with an opposing pass catcher as well. Now, you obviously can play your quarterback naked, which just simply means that there is no, you know, pass catcher. There is no no correlation from the same team, but those are, you know, almost, well, not almost, those are exclusively to, running quarterbacks and even then i would say if you're not going to stack your quarterback or he doesn't have good stacking options for that week then you probably just look elsewhere but quarterback position is one where we spend quite a bit of money and so it's one that you really need to make sure that it tells the story that you want your lineup to tell the quarterback is obviously a pivotal piece to that so i hope you've enjoyed the video if you haven't done so yet go ahead pop on over here Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on those notifications so you can get an alert every single time a new video comes out. And if you've enjoyed this video or any of the strategy videos, go ahead and drop a like on this as well. And I'll see you next time.